Hey everyone and welcome to another installment of Board Games Hitting My Table. So this is a series where I talk about all the non-new to me board games that I've played during a half of the month, this one being for the second half of April 2022, just to give you an idea about what I'm playing, what's hitting my table and what I'm enjoying. So I've actually had a pretty good month, but most of which have been new board games. So keep an eye out for my month in review when it drops on the 1st of May. But let's crack on with the uh, with this video. So first up, I've played a two-player game, of course, because this is only a two-player game uh, of Air, Land and Sea. So I played this one with my mum, actually, and we've got this kind of meta game going on where whenever we have a two-player session, we always get a, a game out of Air, Land and Sea. Um, and we've really kind of developed our skills at it and got better and better. And I think we're pretty much at a similar level, uh, but this time, for, exa um, for some strange reason, um, I absolutely annihilated her, we're winning 12-0, which is um, yeah, a bit of an anomaly at this point, but sometimes that's just the way the cards fall. Um, she didn't know when to back out of the fight and ended up um, costing her dearly. But I still love this little back and forth game about playing cards at the right time, manipulating things to your favour and pressuring your opponent to withdraw from the battle. If you're not familiar with this game, I highly recommend it. If you like these tactical little two-player games, uh, this one is so clever and I love the way the cards work with each other. That is Air, Land and Sea still consistently hitting the table. Now going back to um, a game that was one of the kind of pioneers of my collection really, this is Battle Line by Rani Knizia. This is a pretty simple little kind of poker variant I suppose as you are trying to control these flags by playing these cards. Um, so you've got, I think it's six different suits um, ranging from one to ten and you're trying to build out three kind of hand poker formations, trying to get the best ones, but um, whenever you um, claim a flag by having the best formation or one better than your opponent, because this is another only two player game, then you claim that and you're trying to get three adjacent flags or any five flags out of a po possible nine uh, to win the game. But the hand management in this game is so good as you need to pace yourself and try to formulate how to plan and lay out all these cards in the best order and leave yourself contingency plans. Because if you overcommit, then you're probably gonna cost yourself by not drawing the cards because you are sharing the card deck with your opponent. But I still think this is an absolute evergreen of a game. I hadn't played it in probably about two years or so, which is quite surprising to me. But I still consistently enjoy this one. I've played this one to death, but you know, I still I still enjoy it. Um, again, we had a we had a session of this, just, just the one game, and um, I think things fell in my favour where I ended up winning quite convincingly. But you know, that's not normally the case for me in Battle Line, but it was nice that things went in my favour for once. So that's Battle Line, a, a very good game. I also played a two-player game, which I will openly admit was not the optimal player count of Goa. So this one um, was a grail game for me for many, you know, many years. I've got this one on my collection now, as you can see. Um, and we we had play, previously played this, I think, at the three-player count. And I played this one with, again, my mum, I think, two players, just to introduce her to the game. We both really enjoyed it, but it was quite evident that it wasn't quite as... Um, enjoyable than if we had that higher player count. Um, I just think the auction is a bit better because in this one you kind of have this grid of tiles and you are actually kind of programming what tiles are going to be bid for but you take turns to decide. Um, and with two players not many of them get gobbled up and you know with, with three or four players you can start really kind of spreading out and manipulating the board to see what you want to come up for auction. And then you're basically trying to get resources, you're trying to get these plantations to upgrade your player board, to get victory points and be better at doing things. Uh, it's such a wonderful Euro. It feels like an old timeless, um, one of the kind of, yeah, the old throwback Euros that are um, have really stood the test of time. And I love having this one in my collection. Still love the uh, love the play, but yeah, it was not as good than if it was with that three or four player count. Uh, more two player games now. This is Mandala. So I actually introduced this to a, introduced this game to a friend of mine who you hadn't played the game before. We played this at a convention just by waiting um, for waiting for other players to finish their games. And this one went down an absolute treat. So we actually ended up playing two games on the bounce. First of which was kind of a, you know, a teaching game. And I wasn't really int intending to play it back to back, but my, my opponent enjoyed it that much. They thought, you know, let's play that one more time because they really enjoyed the smoothness of the smoothness of it, the, the decisions, and just, just how nice and a pleasant experience it was. And um, again, this game, you know, sometimes it goes through a little lull in my collection where I don't play it too often, but then I bring it back out and I really remind myself about how good this game is. You know, this was one of my top kind of award winners from last year. It's such a hidden gem and just one of the best two player games out there. And every single play seems to cement that theory for me. I uh, love this game. That is Mandala. 
Another game that's consistently hitting the table for me since I've had this one is Rumble Nation. So I actually played this one twice um, in the second half of the month. Um, the first of which was at the convention at a three player count and again introduced us to two new people and they both thought it was really nice. Never heard of the game before and they took a lot of, um, you know, a good, good experience away from it. The second of which was a four player game um, and I think I think it was only one new player I was introducing this to, but something I've been doing recently with this one is not introducing or not playing with the um, with the little tactics cards that can go with the game. Um, I think I might continue playing it that way because it just makes the game so much more simple as you're just rolling these dice and deploying these cubes onto the board, but there's still enough going on with the way that the, all these regions are resolved. Um, I think by the time this video is out, I should have uploaded a review of Rumble Nation, if you're not familiar with this game, where I can go into a bit more detail, but this is just such a lovely game. It should be a huge hit. This actually featured on my um, top 10 list of games that should have been mega hits, and I truly stand behind that statement, because uh, this is just a brilliant game, and you consistently hit the table when I have so many games in my collection is a kind of a, uh, you know, a, a big praise to a game like this, because again, it's got so much competition, but it's that good. Also played a three player game of Savannah Park. Uh, this is a very simple, puzzly, little um, tile placement game, but you are manipulating all these different things around, all these tiles of these animals around, try and collect groups of the same animal and multiply them by the water watering holes in those groups. Again, another game I introduced to two new players, both of which took a lot of fun away from the experience. They were both kind of braggadocious at the start, thinking this is going to be really easy and they're going to kind of do a perfect scoring, but that was not the case as this so suddenly started finding themselves backed into corners and not being able to make the moves they wanted to. And this is a game is such one of those um, deceiving games where you know, from the box cover you think this is an absolute breeze, it'll be a nice little chilled out family game, and it is that, but um, there really is um, some frustration lying in this box, so you cannot do what you want to do at all times. And you know, when you want to play the perfect tile at the right time, you just haven't got the space for it. So lovely family work game, but one with teeth, and um, I'm still loving this one, that is Savannah Park. Another fan weight game here with Picture Perfect. So this is one of the most unique games I've played uh, this year so far, as you are trying to arrange this kind of, um, all these different standees into different formations because all these different characters have particular needs that they want. So some might say, you know, I want to be stood next to this character. Uh, some might say, I want to be stood next to the table. Or I want this person's face to be hidden. And you're trying to basically um, reveal all these bits of information, remember what they want, and put them in the perfect formation to get the most points. So this is a really fun game to introduce to people because it's fun to explain. It's fun. To, it's a fun concept and it's different to anything else out there. Um, I will say that the more I'm playing this, we have kind of discovered some problems with it, um, which I'll probably go into more in more detail when I do a review of this one. But basically, I don't think there's enough variation in the cards. And you can pretty much do things that you know are gonna come out, um, which again, could have been improved upon. It would have been good to have some more variation there. Um, and additionally, I, I think this has got one or two mechanisms too many in the game that could have been stripped out. But again, I'll, I'll save that for, for the review because, um, but you know, well, because I think that's the best place to talk about that. But I still think this is a good, good game. Uh, I think it's, I, you know, I always love games when they try something different, and this one is certainly done that. That is picture perfect. Um, very fun game. On to a couple of heavier bits now. So we played a three-player game of Barrage. So this one last year um, completely flew into the upper echelons of my top. Uh, you know, top 50, top 100 games of all time, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one is, I think, ranked three at the moment. And you know what? Spoiler alert, it might have even gone up since then. Uh, this one is a pretty heavy um, euro as you are trying to convert water into energy by capturing all this energy in these dams um, and then um, running, running them through all these different machinery, these conduits and power stations. But you can block people off. So it's very cutthroat. Um, very, you've got to be quite proactive in how you look at the board and how you read things. Um, every time I play this game, it feels like I'm kind of um, just trying to find my feet and know what to do next. I'm not very good at it, but I kind of love the way that it plays out. You're always just one or two resources short of what you want to do. And you know what? Every single time I've played this game, I've always found myself quite... Uh, in quite a good position in terms of managing my machinery and things. But for some reason in this game, I really struggled with um, with managing that machinery. But I'm starting to learn from some of my mistakes and I still I still love this game so, so much. It's just absolutely 
unbelievably good. So if you love your economic industrial euros, Barrage is certainly one you need to look at. And we all had a good time on this one. Um, and it was, yeah, it's just an absolute breeze to play. And as, yeah, despite the depth and the, the layers here, the actual rule set are pretty, um, it's, it's pretty straightforward, which is a great thing. And we all had a great time. And I think I ended up taking the win for the first time. So that is Barrage. On the same kind of theme there with the um, more economic euros, I played a four player game of Brass with two players who hadn't played before. Um, two of which, well, one of which was me. Um, I'm not a very good player at Barrage. And the other player was someone who hadn't played it in a long time. So I was kind of semi helping to teach this one. Um, but this was um, probably the best experience with Brass I've had so far. And that's saying something because I've enjoyed every single play with Brass. Uh, just, just like Barrage, this one, I kind of feel like I'm always playing it for the first time each time I play it, but that's part of the fun for me. I love um, re revealing things and discovering where I've made mistakes. The first half of the game here, we basically achieved nothing, um, but the second half of the game, the penny really dropped for us and we started to play a lot better, I think. Um, I love the way the resources work. It's not the most intuitive thing to explain to people who haven't played it before, but again, once that penny drops, it's pretty much fine. Um, and funny enough, when we, um, when we played this, we all took quite a different approach. Um, one of the players who was new to it was really struggling with money. They were constantly finding themselves taking loans and things. We thought they were kind of out of the running to win the game and they actually ended up putting loads of buildings down in the second phase and took the win, which was quite a surprise. And it was a lot of fun. I, I really love this game. And again, four players is where the game totally shines. Now, I, I'm happy to play it at three. And I'd, you know, I'd even play it at two if I have to because it's, a, it's not the easiest game to get to the table. But at four players... It is absolutely fantastic. That is Brass Birmingham. Um, absolutely amazing game. Um, on a more kind of, you know, adjacent economic feel to it, this is Modern Art. Can we play this another game at three players at a convention? Um, I taught this to two new people who hadn't played it before. And I know that one of the players I was playing with is really into their economic games. I wasn't quite sure how this would land because it's kind of, a, you know, not the same kind of thing as a barrage or brass. But... They still really appreciated how the money flows in this game. So this is like a straight up auction game. But whenever you host an auction and people buy the cards off you, you get the money yourself. And I love the scoring system in this game. As only the three most popular artists each round score. But that kind of ties on to the next, um, next years or rounds where their scores start to build together if they remain popular. So I love the scoring system. It's so interesting. Pretty quick, you know, it only takes about half an hour to 45 minutes to play. And you've got to be really careful about how much you give to other players. Um, I got absolutely annihilated in this game. Somebody had a really strong position where they were, I think all the popular artists they had investments in. And there were all the cards coming out. And it was just a win-win situation where they would either get the artist themselves for paying the money and get loads of rewards. Or people would spend a ton of money to buy that artist off them. So yeah, when you're in that position, there's um, pretty much no stopping you. But love the game. It's fantastic and a real classic. That is modern art. A couple more heavier games here. So it's quite nice that I've revisited some bigger ones. Uh, we played a two-player game of Boone Lake. And by God, we drastically improve on our last play of this one because we always kind of, um, you know, we went through the motions. We weren't doing terribly well on the last time we played this one. But this time um, we, I think, pretty much doubled our score from the from the last time we played it. I managed to get a hell of a lot. In fact, we both got, got a hell of a lot achieved. I think I unlocked every single building on our player board. Uh, I played a ton of cards and I really built up a ultra strong money engine, where which pretty much gives you the flexibility to do whatever you want. So I'm thinking maybe we took a bit too long to fly down the water track and um, you know gave ourselves a bit too much leeway and wiggle room to do whatever we wanted, which probably could have been um, prevented by you know, the person not winning. Um, but I still think the you know mechanically this game is so, so good. I think you do need someone kind of pushing the game forward to bring it to the end. Um, but there's so much to like here. I love the um, I love all the way the buildings score. You know, getting all your buildings on the board and ev the way that all the different things interact with each other. Because you want to build things down yourself, but when you build things, you might be incentiv incentivizing other people to build on top of your things or um, and get rewards or adjacency bonuses. Just a just a wonderful game by Alexander Fister. Something somewhat similar to Terra Mystica, and I might even have to. Um, get Terra Mystic out relatively soon and contrast the two and maybe see if there's room to keep both in my collection or not. I'm not quite decided on that one. But I still think the game is great. Um, and yeah, we had a really good time with it. 
but yeah, you really do need to um, to be careful about what your p opponent is doing and know when to bring the game to an end. But brilliant game, some great engine building, and pretty much everything you want from a Fista game. And I enjoyed it a lot, and it's certainly sticking around for the near future. I uh, also played a four-player game of Glenmore 2 Chronicles, which is pretty much you know, solidified as my favourite tile placement game at this point. Um, what a wonderful game this is, and at four players, it is so tight, because you really don't get, actually get that many goes, because you are trying to actually build a, the smallest map as you can, but an efficient as map as possible, because if you have too big of a map and you place too many tiles, then you're gonna get pretty heavily punished at the end of the game, which did happen in our game. Um, one of the players, or one of my opponents, uh, managed to build a very succinct and good little, um, little engine and managed to completely run away with the beer barrels um, or the, the kegs and none of us managed to quite get there. So every single scoring phase, he was getting eight points. All of us were getting kind of one or two points based on the other categories, and we were just unable to catch him. But very good play. We played the bare bones version, so we didn't play with any of the uh, other modules. And um, because we were playing with somebody who had never played the game before, and it was getting quite late in the night, um, but still, love the game. It is so, so good. But yeah, at four players, God, it is very tight. And there are so many games out there that do the time track mechanism. And I don't think any of them even come close to Glenmore because most time with the time track, people always just go to the next spot or maybe the next spot or two. But this one, sometimes you're jumping across the whole of the board and you know, forsaking a hell of actions just to get the exact tile you want. And that is what you need with the time, time track. You do not want to start crawling across spot to spot. Otherwise, the game plays you and you don't play the game. And um, Glenmore is just an amazing design. And I love it dearly. I've got a couple more games here that I don't have the physical version of that I need to talk about quickly. Uh, the first of which we played a five player game of Century Spice Road. So I haven't played this one in quite a while actually, but I'm still amazed how quickly this one does play at the higher player counts and it does scale very well. Um, the gameplay itself, I'm, you know, I'm not overly fussed on. I think it's fine. Um, I don't think it's terribly interesting. It's a true, you know, cube converter. Trade this cube to get this cube, buy a contract and go through the motions. And um, we all were pretty much level in skill and it was just a, a matter of who got the best card at the right time and how the cards came out but it was fine i'm not against the game but i don't love it either that is century spice road but additionally we played a two-player game of merlin this is the deluxe big box where i pretty much played with everything apart from the latest morgana expansion um, and this one i must admit um, despite really enjoying the game it's become so bloated now especially to get the optimal experience because the base game alone isn't the best and you do need a few expansion modules and the extra kind of little queenies and things that you push in or put into the game do improve the game experience but it becomes so sprawling there's little bits everywhere that it has kind of tarnished the game for me a bit again the gameplay i think is great um it's a lot of fun it's um very interesting as you can kind of um, allocate these dice as you see fit um one of the modules i did introduce was this market where there's a new spot on the board which gives you coins and then you can use those coins to buy very specific things you want so if you need a maybe you need a red shield to fight off that invader you can spend a coin at the market and buy that red shield but nobody else can do it from then on so i did like that i thought it was a very welcome addition but everything else Again, I like the game, but it's just becoming a bit too cumbersome for me um, to stop me enjoying it as much as I could and preventing it getting to the table. So um, you can probably tell from the, uh, the fact that I don't have the physical version here what's happened to this game, and we'll talk about that on a later episode. I um, also played a, I think it was a four-player game of Galaxy Trucker. So this is the second time I've played Galaxy Trucker. And I will admit, I did enjoy it more the first time because it was all new to me, it was all new and exciting, but I still don't dislike this one. It's pretty quick, it's chaotic, it's frantic, but the idea of just constructing this ship as you as you see fit, um, doing the best of what you've got and seeing how it weathers the storm is, is a good fun concept. And again, I, I do quite enjoy the game despite um, it not being the traditional type of game I go for. So that is uh, Galaxy Tracker. We ordered absolutely terrible in this one. We all got very few points and every single round our ships got annihilated, which is all part of the fun, of course. So that's it, really. That is all the games that I've played 
for all the new to me games that I played during the second half of April 2022. Um, again, I've played a lot of new games this month, so be sure to check out my month in review when it drops on the 1st of May, because we've got a big bunch of games to talk about, uh, lots of interesting ones as well. So again, I really urge you to maybe subscribe to the channel and check out those. But for everyone else, of course, um, be sure to hit like on the uh, video, comment, you know, let me know what you've been playing, and all the other good stuff, you know, check out my Patreon page and the rest. But for everyone else, I'll see you next time on Channel of the Board. Bye.